Howdy guys, Nintendo Capri Zone here, welcome you back to Let's Play Final Fantasy X. In the last episode, we were just about, we just got to Luca actually, and we were, we got a big Blitzball tournament coming up, and hold, I, I probably shouldn't be recording another episode, I'm up to an hour and 29 minutes on the recording here. <laughs> I shouldn't be pushing this thing so hard. Uh, I should at least start a new video if I'm going to do this. Yeah, stop and stretch and stop and stare while you're at it. What's going on? Could there be something wrong? Wait a minute, what? All of a sudden, Yuno's over here with the reporters and Kamari's out here. What the heck? Oh, great. I'm she must have gotten... Please let me through. Uh, okay. Hey, Whatever. Let's go. Man, nice video camera. Look at that You're hexagonal really shape thing. Famous. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she's so flattered. She doesn't care. She doesn't think she's famous at all. She's just like me, I guess. Uh, I shouldn't say that. I'm not as famous as she is. Hope we don't get separated. <laughs> I think we just did. Oh. It's a whistle. Dude, tell me you've never heard somebody do that before. Seriously. In Xanarkin, we do this to cheer on Blitz players. Yeah, do it again. Yep. <laughs> She's just like, okay. You try it too. Put your fingers in your mouth like this. <laughs> I love how he starts talking like he's got something in his mouth before he actually puts something in his mouth. I'm on a twin gum right now. He just blow. Sorry, Titus. I think you got more experience in the blowing department working. than she does. Practice. Okay. Okay. Well, hey, yeah. You just that, do it. Get then but she can't do it yet. Running, okay. Just give her a whistle, like a coach whistle, well, to blow. Guess we should just stick together then. Till you can do it. Yeah, I yes, suppose. Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, you. Let's actually go up here first. Uh, we're in the middle of the. Uh, some kind of courtyard, I guess. I don't know. And up here is a very unusual place, which I probably—I don't really know that much about it, to tell you the truth. It's like, it's kind of like a place you come to watch all the movies from the game, like the FMV sequences. It's like a movie theater, actually. But the only reason I'm coming here is because there is an Albed Primer here, which I uh, don't think it's here. Wait a minute, it should be like, oh, it's right down there. Duh, I see it now. For crying out loud. No, don't exit the area, you dimwit. Get your ass back in there before I kick it. It's over there. Right there. Thank you, Albert Primer number seven. All right. So we're picking them up like gangbusters. I've never gotten this many before, I'll tell you. Usually I find like about average, like on an average playthrough, I typically find like 12 or 13 of them, about half of them. So this is really cool to be getting all of them. Uh, so I never would have guessed where half of these even were. Okay, so now that we've done that, we need to head to the right. Which obviously is where the arrow says to head. You could talk to people if you want. There's a some interesting dialogue, but I wouldn't deprive you of that. I don't want to show like the entire game here. Because that would take like Whoa. 300 episodes. This is a pretty big town. Yep. Luca is the second largest city in Spira. Ooh. I thought every town was little. You know, like Besaid and Kilika. Towns don't usually get bigger than that. Uh, yeah. I can see why. Because when a lot of people start to gather. Sin? Hmm. Yep. What about Luca? It's safe here? It's not any different, but the stadium is here. The Crusaders fight to protect it with all their strength. They protect the stadium? Blitzball is really the only entertainment that we have. Yet we have no records of you. It's a little short on fun these days. Yeah. Whoa. Talk about pressure. Yeah, really. <laughs> That's right. Nice Is shot. Like this too? Well, let's have a look and see. It's uh, mm. not nearly as well, colorful. There are more buildings. 
all tall ones and cramped together. Oh. My. This is just a whole lot of masturbation between be Titus so and Yuna tall. here that goes on for Don't like, you, ever get dizzy? you know, ever. But this has to happen, you know, to whatever. Let's for... go find Sir Oren. Yeah, let's do that. Let's stop talking about my hometown and my dad and whatever else we can find. So let's head up here into the cafe. Welcome to the cafe. You must try the Odd Dolly Special. You must try the Odd Dolly Special. Or whatever he says there. I don't know. Holy crap. Uh, I don't see any Ronzos in here. Which is strange because I don't Orin's see Orin either. Here. Yeah, he probably went to another bar when the karaoke got finished up here. Hmm. I guess this is supposed to be like time going by or something here. Because all of a sudden, next thing you know. Huh? Why not talk, Kimari? Not see Yenke for ten years. Say something. Oh. Kimari forget Yenke? Forget Biran? Leave Kimari, Yenke. Kimari is small, Ranzo. Hey! Kimari so small, can see Yenke and Biran's faces. Well, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Kimari forget Ranzo friends? We taught you much at time of Hornmoon. At what? Biran taught Kimari to be strong, Ranzo. Maybe taught too much. Take him on. <laughs> And Kimari actually goes for it too, I love it. That's like one of my favorite parts of the game, like... I know I say it all the time, but this is my favorite part of the game, but... Like when I'm thinking about specific scenes... Oh crap, Kimari just got knocked the F out! Shut up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, Titus is like, you know, he hasn't barely even spoken to Kamari. The only interaction they've had is the fight that they had. And yet, he's All encouraging Kamari, you know. It's like, that's part, that's another reason why I kind of like him. Such is the nature of he's, this he's just that friendly, I guess. The spectators play our role accordingly. Okay. Let us sing to the glory of the winners and applaud equally the valor of the defeated. Yeah. Uh, Contestants. Valor of the defeated, may my ass. Heaven be with you. Okay, whatever. That's a pointy beard you got. Whoa! Water on the camera. So this is how they played blitzball in the old days. Like they actually had to fill up the stadium. Like, this would never work. Like, no glass stadium would hold up. It doesn't look like there even is a stadium that it's flowing into. Unless it's artificial or some kind of magic or something, I don't know. Or maybe it's held by gravity. Well, no, because it wouldn't fill up from bottom to top then. It would fill up from center outward. Huh. Well, heck if I know. Yeah, even though it looks like a 3D game, it's actually a 2D game that takes place in a circular arena. So it's not that complicated. You just get the ball into the other person's goal and that's it. And when you actually you run into somebody on the field, your uh, tackles, so to speak, will take place Final Fantasy style, as in whoever has the highest number will most of the time get the ball. So yeah, we'll, we'll see that more when we get, you know into the game itself. Which is still quite a ways from now. If you can believe that. Yeah. Ugh. Just so much crap to go through Come here. Hurry. Yuna's gone. Oh no. Damn it. Kimori has to just run away because his duty as guardian is more important than sticking up for himself. Which is so sad. 
I don't know how much you could have heard the music there, but that was actually... You'll actually hear that music again later in the game. It's one of my favorite themes in the game. Where in Spira? What? In exchange for her safe return, they want the Aurochs to lose. What the hell? What? If they're only Blitzball players, I doubt they'd do anything drastic. But we shouldn't take chances. Let's go get her. Yeah, I guess we better. Well, no, we thought we were gonna stay behind. They're telling the Aurochs to throw the game, as if they needed to. I mean, how good a team can they be? Well, you don't know, actually. He'll take yeah. care of the game. We should go get Yuna. The All right. The boat is in dock four. Let's dock and go. bay 94, 94. Let's go. I can't remember what time I started this now. I think it was 129, and now it's 140. So anyway. Let's go ahead and talk to somebody here. Everyone went to go see the opening ceremony. Hey, ain't you a blitzer? What are you doing walking around? Well, my friends are all getting captured. You know, Oren's supposed to be in a bar and he's not there. Kamari's getting in a fight with his old friends. Yuno's getting captured by the Albed. And Waka's off playing a blitzball game. I mean, does this get any more complicated? So let's head off this way. Wait, what has this guy got to say? The stadium is surrounded by numerous ports laid out in a circular fashion, so it's impossible to get lost. I know. I knew that. Now, you can, you can pretty much tell which dock you're at by the number in the ground. As you can see, this is number one. It doesn't look like a one, but that's what that is. Probably should have gone the other way to get there faster, because we were looking for dock number four, actually. Oh, well. I think it makes you go this way anyway. Oh, jeez, we haven't had much fighting lately. Holy crap. Yeah, we need to get to work on Kimari's sphere grid so we can get that. Whoa, what are they? Uh... Yeah. They are mostly vulnerable to lightning. Mm hmm Now, we don't have any characters to switch in, because Yuna obviously has been captured and Walk is playing the game. So we don't have to worry about that for a while. But, there's not much we can really do, as far as physical goes. So when Lulu's turn comes up, you probably want to attack the enemy who has the full HP. Otherwise, you're just wasting a turn. And then you'll just have to smack around the other one with the two melee fires before whatever. But at least this way, you get him and only have to cast one spell in the process. Bow, bow, bow. Oh, yeah. They give crap for experience, as you can see. I don't think you can get an overkill on machines, which really kind of blows. But yeah, so. Let's get on through here. Uh, more. Okay, dock three right there. You can see the number in the ground. That's set already. I, th I think we missed dock two. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. Unless it goes one, three, five, six, four, two, or something. What's up with these guys? Uh, they're stupid. That's what. Boing. Yeah, I think, I think this is kind of a scripted battle here, where there's like, you know, just keep getting more and more of them to keep coming into the arena, you know, to get their shot at you. So, what else can you do, you know? Yeah, well, that Lulu defend, because he's only got like 80 HP left. Just attack him. <laughs> and what? Oh, damn it. They knew we were coming. Oh, why did I do that? Oh, oh that's what Lulu's physical attack looks like. <laughs> Sometimes they show that up close. Basically, she's carrying a Moogle doll, and she puts it on the ground, and it walks up to the enemy and hits it, and then walks back to her. <laughs> it's so funny. But, yeah, as you can imagine, it doesn't do any, hardly any damage at all, so... Definitely not something you want to do to win a battle. It might be worth a laugh, but that's about it. <laughs> oh, shoot, I'm out of time. Oh, crap. I'm, like, literally out of time. I have to start fast-forwarding. Please don't make me do that. Okay, well, we got some experience there. So, in the next episode of Final Fantasy X, we're going to find out... ...what happened to... Oh, dear. Oh, please, God, not a cutscene right now. The I don't have time. Are keeping the score tied with some excellent defense, folks. Really? But can they hold out to win the actual game itself? Well, find out next time on Let's Play Final Fantasy X. Take care, y'all.